Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to part six of Logical Redstone. A quick note before I start, uh, my channel, I don't know if you noticed, but it's actually growing. If you're new, I'm super happy to have you here. I hope you enjoy. And if you have any suggestions at all for future videos or really anything, just leave a comment. I read all comments. But with that out of the way, let's get started. Today, we're just gonna be talking about pulses and clocks. First, let's talk a little bit about repeaters because it's really important for all this stuff. So there's four different types of repeaters. Obviously, this is the one that you place down by default, but if you adjust it with right click, you can adjust the amount of ticks that it's set for. This is called a one tick repeater or a normal repeater. If you hit it once with right click, it becomes a two tick repeater and adds another tick of delay. So by default, it only waits one tick before repeating the signal. But if you have a two tick repeater, it waits two ticks before repeating the signal all the way up to four where you input the signal, it waits four ticks, and then outputs the same signal. So with that out of the way, how do we actually generate pulses? Well, you can just use buttons. I mean, that's what I was doing already. A stone button will generate a 10 tick pulse. That means that as soon as I press this button, it will generate a signal in all directions that is the length of 10 ticks. So you can actually see it in these repeaters. These repeaters are two ticks each. And so when we press this button, we should see a 10 tick pulse flow through them, meaning that we should see five of them because five times two is 10. And so you can pause the video here to count them. It should be five long. Wooden buttons just get a little bit longer. They generate a 15 tick pulse. Now I have three tick repeaters here. So three times five is 15. So we should see a five long repeater chain of this pulse once again, but don't be confused with this one. This wooden button is longer. This one's 10 ticks. This one's 15 ticks. It's just that these are longer repeaters. Okay, that's simple enough, but what if we wanna generate a pulse that's shorter or longer? Well, for shorter, we can at least use these pulse generators, which are really nifty. Like I literally use these all the time. It's just a sticky piston going up, dust into the back and a repeater out front. And the repeater out front is going to tell you what kind of pulse you're generating. If you put a one tick repeater out front, you get a one tick pulse being generated. Two tick repeater out front generates a two tick pulse. And so you can see it in these repeaters. I'm actually gonna slow down the game so you can see it a little bit easier. When you flip this lever, it cuts off the signal and gives you a nice little one tick pulse. So same thing over here. If you do this, it cuts off the signal for two ticks and you get a nice little two tick pulse. So this is a really easy way to just set up a little circuit that gives you a one, two, three, or four tick pulse, depending on what you need. But uh, I don't really like pistons, they're not solid state. So if you wanna go with a pistonless design, here you go. You have a comparator and then it waits a certain amount of time before canceling that comparator. So if you wanna generate a two tick pulse, you basically send it through the comparator and also wait two ticks and then shut off the comparator. So let me just make sure the game is slowed down again. And when we flip this lever, we wait two ticks and then shut off the comparator. So we get a nice two tick pulse coming out. And here's the same thing, but for four ticks. And what's even better about these designs is you're not limited to just four ticks. You can actually make it as long as you want. It's completely variable. All you have to do is extend this line out. So if I wanted to say make a eight tick pulse, you could just put two four tick repeaters, expand this out like this, grab another lever and you're good to go. So if you flip this, it's gonna output signal wait eight ticks and cancel it. And I don't really have enough repeaters to show it, but hopefully you saw that it reached all the way across for these eight repeaters and then stopped. So we do indeed have an eight tick pulse coming out of here. All right, so now we know how to generate a pulse of pretty much any length. Another thing I wanna show you, which can be really useful in making pulses like these is called pulse extension. Basically, we're gonna take an existing pulse and delay it and add it back onto its own line to extend itself. So let's say we're starting with something like a stone button, which is gonna generate a 10 tick pulse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw out that pulse as if you can like physically see it. So this line is 10 blocks long. And so this resembles our first 10 ticks of time where the stone button is on. Now, what would happen if we delayed it by some amount and then added it back on? Well, let's find out. So we can take this line and delay it by let's just say two ticks. So make another, line here so now the green and blue are both 10 ticks long but the blue was delayed by two ticks and so if you sum these together and look at what their uh combined like total is you can see that you get a pulse that is 12 ticks long all right so let's try this if we have a stone button put it here let's give it its main line and then we can give it a two tick repeater 
and then plug it back into itself. And this should generate a 12 tick pulse. And we can prove it to ourselves by making a bunch of four tick repeaters. And we should see a signal that is three repeaters long because four times three is 12. So let's see. Game's a little slow, but there we go. So that is the idea of pulse extension. It's really that easy. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is if these green and blue get too separated from each other. For example, if this guy was moved like up here, well, it's like now your red is gonna look something like this. And so you're gonna have gaps in your pulse. So you, you wanna make sure that doesn't happen. But you know, if you draw a diagram and make sure that it always has a continuous total line, you should be good to go. All right, before I talk about the final property of this video, which is clocks, I wanna show one property that like people like never talk about. And I remember when I didn't know about this, it caused all types of bugs. So I just wanna make sure you're aware of it. That way it doesn't make those same bugs for you. Uh, so if you have a one tick pulse, for example, and you know, that's all fine as long as it's going through a bunch of one tick repeaters. But as soon as that one tick pulse goes through a repeater that's longer than one tick, it actually extends the pulse. So let me make the tick rate like uh, three. And I wanna show you what happens here. You flip this lever, <clears throat> we get a one tick pulse. It goes through here. Then it gets delayed by four ticks in this four tick repeater. But then look what happens. It gets extended to a four tick pulse. So repeaters actually do two things. They not only delay the signal by the amount of ticks they're set for, but they also extend pulses that are less than what the repeater is set to. So let me show you one more example. Literally, as long as the pulse you're sending is less than the repeater, you will see this property. So let's do a two tick pulse into a three tick repeater. And what you're gonna see is that we get a nice two tick pulse, then it gets sent into this guy, and now it's a three tick pulse. All right, final topic, clocks. So clocks are obviously extremely useful for all types of stuff. I'm sure you've made one if you're into redstone builds. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of like a general form that I use to make clocks. I usually start off with a some type of pulse generator to start it off, which feeds into a main loop. And then I also have a way to stop the loop. So the way that you do this with pistons is you have a pulse generator from the beginning of the video, and this is a two tick pulse generator. And then this is a eight tick clock, because if you count up all these repeaters, we've got two, four, six, eight. We're getting signal from this guy every single time it comes to here. So that's every clock cycle, this lamp goes off. The way to clear it is to just pull this block back and then the clock gets reset. So let's see what this looks like. And let's turn the tick rate back up and we get a nice little eight tick clock and you can stop it at any time by simply retracting this piston. So this is just a nice intuitive way to make a clock. I mean, you've got a start button and you've got a stop button, so it's pretty easy. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is sometimes if you have a long enough clock, this piston actually won't stop it. So basically, like if the pulse was on this side of the clock while you were retracting it, and then it's not retracted by the time it gets over there, it, like nothing happens. The, it just doesn't stop it. So the way to know that this stopper is going to always stop your clock is to just make sure that the pulse length that you're feeding into the stopper is at least as high as the clock. Here's what I mean by that. A stone button is 10 ticks, our clock is eight ticks. 10 is greater than eight, so I know that no matter what, when I press this button, it will stop this clock. But for example, if I incremented all of these, and now it's a 12 tick clock, and this is only a 10 tick button, so there is a slight chance that when I press this button, it will not clear it. But you know how to fix that now, you can just make a pulse extender. All right, let's take a look at the comparator version. So it's pretty much the exact same thing, we've just got a two tick pulse generator, which goes into an eight tick clock. We've got two ticks, two ticks, one tick, one tick, and two ticks, which adds to eight. And we have a comparator out here for when we wanna stop the clock. So when we press this button, it's going to cancel this comparator, which stops the clock. And again, a stone button is 10 ticks, 10 is greater than eight. So we know that this clock will always be stopped when we press this button. And here it is in action. It looks like pretty much the exact same thing, just a little bit cleaner. All right, last thing in this video is let's just make a clock from scratch. So I'll just choose some numbers and we'll just do it because now we know how to. Uh, let's just do a 13 tick clock with, uh, that generates a three tick pulse every, you know, every clock cycle. So we know that we're gonna have to start off with a three tick pulse generator. I personally like comparators a lot more. So I'm gonna go with this design, three tick pulse generator. Let's put it into, what did I say? 13 uh, tick clock. 
Now, the important thing to note here is that we can't use four tick repeaters because remember when I talked about that extension property? If we want this pulse within the clock to stay at three ticks, we cannot use four tick repeaters, otherwise it'll get extended. All right, so 13 ticks, let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we can probably just do something like this. And then we'll put an output over here. Let's grab a lamp. We should be good to go. So we press this button, we get a three tick pulse on a 13 tick clock. Now, I forgot to do the clear. Uh, let's just do it with a piston because it's nice and easy. Piston, torch, and stone button. All right, what's the problem with this? <laughs> it's the stone button, right? This will not always clear it because 10 is less than 13. Easiest fix is just making an oak button. Now it's 15, which is greater than 13. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Again, I'm happy to have you here. Super happy to have this community growing. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.